Manga has been a dominant force in the Japanese publishing industry for decades now, and in the last several years is becoming one in the world at large. But what is it about manga that is capturing the attention of millions everywhere? What makes it one of, if not the most successful comics industry in the world? In this video, I'll be exploring what I think makes manga, both the medium and the industry, appealing to a lot of people. Number one, the emphasis on individual vision. The mediums of film, video games, and anime often require many individuals or teams of individuals of different artistic disciplines to produce works considered to meet a standard of quality. Cases of completely self-developed works in these mediums are few and far between because of the sheer amount of skills, time, and resources necessary to create them, and rarely do they receive a similar level of recognition. Directors are put at the helm of these projects, and one could say their unique vision is what ultimately shines through in the end. In reality, while many talented directors of their respective industries are able to develop recognizable trademarks across their works, their main job is to guide these projects to completion, which requires compromise with other creative people and those invested financially as producers. Here, the director's own vision must take a backseat to the groups. There's also the fact that what a director might have in their head for a certain aspect of a project, such as music or the delivery of actors, may not be properly communicated to the artists that will handle them. So I think manga has a similar appeal that mediums like music, artwork, and novels have, which is pure individual artistic expression. Manga is mainly done by one artist, or in certain cases, a small close-knit group with a unified vision. Many mangakas employ assistants, but they are usually relegated to specific repetitive tasks with no real artistic input coming from them. Editors may play a big part in the planning of the series, but it always seemed to me that editors prioritize having the uniqueness of their artists shine through. Editors are mainly there to provide suggestions to the artists that will help communicate their ideas better to the readers. Editors who compel their artists to just follow trends are generally looked down upon, so it comes down to the mangaka to decide basically everything about the work, from its story, outlining, drawing, and inking, thus being a pure expression of their vision. Though pure individual artistic expression is an ideal, as any work of art is subject to external factors outside the creator's control, most obvious being time and finances. Despite this, the manga industry promotes the individuality of its mangaka as much as possible. If you've read enough manga, the sheer diversity of stories is staggering, and not to mention how esoteric many premises for these stories are. Just imagine trying to publish in any other industry the kinds of stories about trivial hobbies or out there worlds which you see everywhere in manga. Mangakas are able to bring their specific expertise into their works, whether it be in cooking, a sport, a profession, knowledge of culture and history, and really anything under the sun. And there always seems to be a publisher, or at least a niche audience, willing to eat it up. But by far the most apparent quality that distinguishes every manga is its art style. And the majority of manga artists really try to cultivate a style of their own. Even though common trademarks of certain genres, like in battle shonen and shoujo romance, will appear across many works under them, there's always nuances that an artist will bring that makes their work stand out. You only need to browse through a shelf of manga to be overwhelmed with a variety of unique art styles the industry produces. And it's clear to see that the market of manga is dominated by artists who are as distinctive as possible. You can also see that the manga industry tends to promote the individual artist rather than just a single work. Series are closely tied to their creators, so the success of a series means popularity for its mangaka as well. And you'll see for many professional mangakas, their careers do not begin or end from one big hit. Mangakas tend to have multiple series and one-shots released over the course of their career. Their readers tend to follow or at least recognize them when they release a new work, especially since publishers themselves will use the popularity of their previous works to promote their new ones. But I think this emphasis on the artists and not just their works is seen plainly through how much fame and fortune they receive with some rising to become personalities in and of themselves. Number 2. Versatility Versatility is a quality of manga that gives it such a vast amount of potential. This is seen in the industry practices and the medium itself. Now, the standard reliefs format of manga has remained largely unchanged, with many different series chapters bundled together in a magazine. 
than individually being released as volumes. However, there's no set standard for other aspects in how manga is released. When it comes to release schedule for a series, typically you find series releasing on a weekly or monthly basis. But there's a clear spectrum as seen from series releasing bi-weekly or bi-monthly for example. Web manga have also seen chapters for a series released daily. So there's clear flexibility in the industry for many types of release schedules, which is a benefit for both mangakas and the readers. All manga is not released in a rigid yearly schedule unlike anime where new series tend to only release at the start of a new season. In terms of the length of the series, this seems to be dependent on the type of story a manga is. You can see with shonen and gag series whose premise allows them to go seemingly indefinitely until the creator runs out of ideas or the audience lose interest, and there are many examples of series like these going over 500 chapters. You also have series with a clear end goal that are not meant to be dragged on for too long. Here I think of mystery and romance series which stay around 50 to 100 chapters. Much shorter series exist as well with one shots which are a single standalone issue of a complete work used for just telling a smaller story or a way to gauge the potential success of a story if it were to be serialized. There's also variance on the amount of pages per chapter in any series. Typically the page count is dependent on the release schedule where weekly series tend to average around 18 to 22 pages while monthly ones average around 40 to 50. But this is hardly always the case, with some monthly and bi-weekly series that even have lesser pages than weekly ones. This seems to be determined by the agreement with magazine publishers and the mangakas, which in turn is determined by how many pages the artist can output in a certain time frame. And while manga has typically been printed in black and white, you still see many series experimenting with different coloring styles over the years. All this shows the industry's versatility in its release formats to account for many different types of stories and the capabilities of the artists. But to me, the most versatile aspects of manga can be observed in the nature of the medium itself. Manga falls under the greater medium of sequential art, a term coined by Will Eisner to describe art forms that use images deployed in a specific order for the purpose of graphic storytelling. Images here being both words represented through the symbols of the alphabet of a language, and the more commonly understood meaning of images being that of pictures or artworks of characters in their setting. Mangaka, and all sequential artists, having both these elements at their disposal, have a deceptively great amount of control over how they want to communicate with their readers. Where a multitude of descriptions could be used to convey scenery in a novel, in a manga those descriptions could be condensed by simply drawing the scenery. On the other hand, the vagueness of an image can be locked down to a specific meaning using words alongside it. Mangaka have both the immediacy of pictures and the clarity of written language to communicate to readers and this makes the medium very versatile in achieving specific effects. Just try to observe how dissimilar two manga can be just from how much they utilize words or pictures. Manga is also more flexible in conveying time in its stories. In sequential art, time is implied more than felt or experienced as it would be if you were, say, watching a movie. Time is often conveyed through the transition between panels but also with the size panels have relative to others with larger panels implying an action spanning a greater length of time. However, the sense of time can be made intentionally vague by having panels bleed into one another or have no separation whatsoever, going for a collage portrayal of the sequence of events. This is common in shoujo manga to highlight the feeling of the scenes rather than an accurate depiction of them. Scott McCloud in Understanding Comics has even noticed a difference in variety in the way time is conveyed in manga than the comics found in other countries particularly in the creating of still time to invoke a mood. All these elements, both in the industry and in the medium itself, I hope give you an idea on how versatile manga can be. This versatility is one of the main factors I think manga is so accessible to many different people, both readers and creators. Which leads me to my next factor. Number 3. Specificity Specificity is not a word that I've seen used to describe art mediums, so just to clarify how I'm using the term, it is a quality of a thing to relate to a specific individual. And I hope you'll understand why I use this word in regards to manga. The different formats manga is released in can accommodate all different types of people to fit their lifestyle and preferences. While the technical aspects of manga allow mangakas to create a broader range of experiences because of these tools at their disposal. In turn, readers will be able to find a series that caters to a specific experience they want. There are manga that go on a more cinematic angle with sparse dialogue and larger panels. 
There are those that are fast-paced with comedy or action whose panels seem to fly by. Those that are more novel-like, focusing on exploring ideas with images as a supplement. And of course, there are manga that aim to be visual experiences in many varieties like horror, psychological, calming, etc. These elements are what makes manga seem so vast in its potential. But in addition to that is the seemingly boundless array of subject matter that manga explores. Let me read you one of my favorite paragraphs from the world of Japanese comics by Frederick L. Scott. The general consensus among readers in Japan today seems to be that comics have as much to say about life as novels and films. But surely one of their most greatest accomplishments is to render visually fascinating the most improbable subjects, such as mahjong, chopping vegetables, and even school examinations. This is done by exaggerating actions and emotions to the point of melodrama, and by paying loving attention to the minute details of everyday life. This ability of manga to bring interest to unlikely subject matter was observed by Scott in 1983, and is an ability that has not been lost even after almost 40 years. Especially the level of detail mangakas will go to when it comes to tackling subjects they are familiar with, it is just outstanding. Some cooking manga can be seen as cookbooks with the level of detail they provide. But you see just as much with manga about specialized professions such as copper making and bartending, and even specific medical fields like radiology. There are manga that are focused in bringing you into a particular culture or time period by exploring every minutia about them to immerse you. It really does seem that mangakas are not just people who draw manga primarily, but those who are bringing their life experiences and interests to the medium to express them to other like-minded people. And because manga is so accessible, it also allows people who aren't familiar with these subjects to understand their appeal and may lead them to explore more. And it's been shown that manga does have that effect, an example being the rise in high school volleyball players in line with the popularity of Haikyuu. So manga has this great quality of tackling niche topics in great detail and in an approachable way. I also add that manga tend to combine subject matter with genres you would never expect would go well together. A road trip slice of life set to the backdrop of a post-apocalyptic world, a story of espionage but with a focus on wholesome family life, and a medicinal focused mystery story set in feudal China, to name just a few. I'm sure many of you watching this probably have your own examples of manga that you've picked up with an unusual premise or one that focused on a niche interest you have. And this is why I think manga is so widely read, because most manga does not try to appeal to everyone, rather hones into a specific demographic or those who would find the subject matter interesting. I don't think there will ever be a decline in manga that you see in, say, popular movies and TV shows due to homogenization. Manga will always be diverse in the true sense of the word, appealing to people of all walks of life and specific interests. If you are watching this as someone who's never picked up a manga, or just the ones that were popular, I guarantee there are manga out there that is for you. You just gotta start looking. Number 4. Low Cost and Accessibility this is the simplest but possibly the biggest factor to manga's success in Japan and worldwide, which is that it is cheap and accessible. Digital apps seem to be an increasing part of where manga is released and read, but even before that, the manga industry has used cheap means of production to keep it affordable to most people, which is why new issues of Shonen Jump are printed on cheap colored paper and bought at Japanese convenience stores. I also think the relative cheapness of manga is the reason for its mass amount of online scanlations for series without official licenses. Most manga stories are also self-contained, so you won't need to understand any complicated continuity to get into a series. And as mentioned before, mangakas tend to produce many works across their careers. So if you resonate with a particular mangaka, more than likely you'll have many works to enjoy from them. On the mangaka side, the industry is basically open for those as young as high school. Many students in Japan start drawing manga at an early age in hopes to pursue a career later on. And practically anyone can begin to be one with cheap materials and an idea. And with the growth of web manga, anyone can be their own publisher. Approachability and affordability were core factors for the rise of manga in the 1950s and continue to be so in its boom today. Manga will always be a medium for the masses. And those are my reasons for why I think manga appeals to millions of people and what makes it successful as an industry. Let me know what you think about them below. These definitely are not the only factors that contribute to manga's popularity, so leave what you think attracts people to the medium. Thanks for watching.